vision in this interim government is to make APC a leader and a real war horse of our struggle. We want to grow it, expand it, hire and train more hands and broadcast round the clock around the world and take command of the media space of this world. You can enjoy all round the clock 24 7 exclusive moments of Bliss as an ABC Amber TV Club member. A cappella. Latest Nigerian stroke African movies, global politics, ABC Amber News and updates, historical documentaries, and lots more. In our daily programs, we have Undaunted, ABC Amber News, bringing into the news untold stories with Onyi Okpala and Star Smart. Exclusive discussion, revolutionary panel conversation, infotainment, edutainment, inter stroke intro governmental debates on topical issues with Tar Paddy King, State of the Liberation Movement, Fronting IG and People of Ambazonia's Position, The Struggles Weekly Update with Secretary Martin Mungwa, PhD, FASC. Health is Wealth, Health Education and Awareness within the Ambazonian Community with Dr. Yaya, Liberation Prayer, an intercessory ministry for Amazonia with Pastor Victor Mba. Our freedom, spiritual awareness and education for the Amazonian community with Pastor Victor Mba and Pastor Commando. Church and politics, neutralizing the myths and preconceived religious and political philosophies that limit the Christian involvement in the realms of decent politics with Pastor Commando. The horizon the voice of the Amazonian woman with Dr. Patience Abiedo and Lady Casey. Our Amber History, bringing to limelight the hidden history of Amazonia to the world with Pastor Commando. Appointment on community building, education on patriotism within the Amazonian communities with Ma Rachel Itatima. Ethics for an imagination. Watchdog of basic principles and morals of a nation at war with Madority Ngwa. Upcoming programs Pigeon News, Vernacular Talk Show, County Roots, Activists Connor, Amber Focus, only on ABC Amber Television. We the people, the voice of the voiceless. For 24 7 access, subscribe as a club member on www.abcambertv.com slash subscribe. Get trained as an IT professional from the comfort of your home. Dynamic Tech Academy gives you a unique opportunity through our six-month program during which you learn skills to transition to being a full-time IT professional. Over 80% of our students have no prior IT background, yet the vast majority of them land jobs a month after they start applying. Our ultimate goal is to reach 100% student placement, so we work with every student until he or she gets a job. Upon successful completion of the course, we will give you a resume, interview preps, one-on-one -on -one coaching from experienced instructors and job placement assistants. Within this course, you get more than 300 hours of theories combined with real-world applications and practical skills you can apply on day one on your job. At the end of the program, our students can be certified as Red Hat Systems Administrator, AWS Cloud Engineer, AWS Security Specialist. Visit our website at www.dynamictechacademy.com to register. Good evening, fellow Ambazonians, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to this very important broadcast. We apologize for starting about 30 minutes um, beyond schedule. It was due to some circumstances beyond our control. But thank God we're here now and we have our commentators, the panelists, seated.
for us to commence this discussion. But before we even think of starting, you've seen our caption. Some have a different opinion. Some would say that we should just despise it. I think uh, analyzing or criticizing or making an appraiser of a situation most often is subjective and a television like ours comes up with topics maybe to neutralize or to debunk public opinion all the media stations or broadcasting houses within the cameroons are giving narrative they're painting a picture that doesn't exist and so we want to look at it and our discussion is what are some of those lessons that enablers could learn from Nijon Frundi. Should I call him Nijon? Well, we are a respectable people, so it wouldn't be a crime if I call him Nijon Frundi. From Nijon Frundi's debacle. It's an important thing for us to look at this morning. And you will want to look at Nijon. When I was growing up as a young man, Nijon was described by more, or most, uh, was considered by most as a hero. What happened? few days before his death he became a dancer the respect of the same people he purportedly was fighting for was nowhere to be found the caption he had in the 90s was power to the people i would like to ask a question was it actually power to the people or was that just a political statement was it power to the people or was it power to Frundi? Our parents believed in this man. Some bled and died. Youths died because they believed that a savior came after over 40 years, I would say 30 years, of Cameroon's brutal occupation over our national territory. Now, how did Frundi rise to power is an important question that we must answer. Where did he come from? Why was Zit Frundi? These are questions I know you like to answer. Now, when Bia arrogantly seceded from the failed union in 1984, Southern Cameroonian leaders, home and abroad, were grouping themselves together to seek for a permanent solution. They thought that it was time for Southern Cameroons to just stop writing petitions or approaching the United Nations to seek for solutions. So they thought that what one of the things they would have to do is to come together and form a political institution that they will use to confront the BR's government. That is that all oh, that was the birth of the Social Democratic Front. They primary objective of the social democratic front wasn't to create an opposition party within the Cameroon within the Cameroons no the social democratic front was objective at ensuring that the voice of sounding Cameroonians that have been drowned by first of all the Aegis government and then the BR government categorically doing it. The objective of that come together was supposed to be to provide a solution. The whole premise for founding the SDF was to legitimize the quest of the Southern Cameroon National Council, which was the freedom from servitude of the Southern Cameroonian people. When the founders of the SDF met, they picked the person who could suffer the least collateral damage, and that was John Frundi. To face the new way for freedom. So our quest for freedom never started today. Contrary to what some enablers, the falters, and black legs will want you to think, some want to narrow it down to 2016. But did it start in 2016? No. The bookseller, well, with all due respect, championed the cause to liberate the Southern Cameroons from the iron grip 
of Biaism. Mr. Bia, when he came back from France as a young diplomat appointed by the Aijo government, was made the head of a commission that was meant to look at what Aijo termed the Anglophone problem. But was there any Anglophone problem? I argue that there, there was no Anglophone problem in the Cameroon's failed union. There has never been any Anglophone problem. There has been a Southern Cameroon's problem. So why then did Aijo create what he called the Southern Cameroon's problem? Was to mask the real problem, to drift away from the right discussion, and to manipulate public, international, and national opinion. They went to structure their education in a way that our history wasn't taught to us. So again, the bookseller, Mr. Frundi, was supposed to champion the liberation of the Southern Cameroons. Then the war hailed him as a hero because of his bravery at the time. The people stood for him. He got himself flattered by the wave of support from all across the nations of the Cameroons, from the northern part of Kuseri to the eastern part of Baturi into the central of, of San Malima. Coming into the Southern Cameroons, Mr. Frundi was a record breaker at the time, loved by all the ethnic groups that constituted the failed union of the Cameroons. A few decades down the line, after he had championed and failed the cause, Mr. Frundi had himself compromised and with a lust for power, fame, money, he was now beholden to a court master. Bia being the superior of him, controlled and teleguided him. You want to ask yourself, was Bia genuinely an opposition leader or was his party for over 30 years just another arm of the CBDM party. I watched a video yesterday with Fong Gojidinka expressing frustrations on the Frundi's involvement in the political history of the people of Southern Cameroons. According to Fong Goji, Mr. Frundi knew the solution that could free Southern Cameroons, but outrightly rejected, denied, and connived with the enemy. In the early 2000s, there's a video roaming around social media where Von Gojidika said, the United Nations said one of the ways to get you free is to have the representatives of Frundi's party withdraw from the parliament in Yaoundé. But Mr. Frundi wouldn't do so. The international community watched Mr. Frundi for decades romancing and rubbing shoulders with the same people that had calculatedly planned to erase his own community, to annihilate the same nation that had annexed his nation. What then can we say about Mr. Bia and Fundi's relationship? How did it so happen that a man that was purportedly a hero in the 90s will end up dying as a zero in 2023. I wish I could put together more than what I just gave to you now. But we have our lawyers in the house. Mr. Tim Beseha is here seated. We also have Barista Ghana and Barista Fu Johnson. Thank you all, gentlemen. We exceptionally do have Dr. Tita, who will focus mostly on telling us about the International Refugee Day scheduled for Tuesday the 20th. That's the World International Refugee Day, what his department is working on, and what we need to expect as a people. Right after the break, 
will commence this discussion. Stay tuned and ask somebody to tune in right now. Thank you. Get trained as an IT professional from the comfort of your home. Dynamic Tech Academy gives you a unique opportunity through our six month program during which you learn skills to transition to being a full-time IT professional. Over 80% of our students have no prior IT background, yet the vast majority of them land jobs a month after they start applying. Our ultimate goal is to reach 100% student placement, so we work with every student until he or she gets a job. Upon successful completion of the course, we will give you a resume, interview preps, one-on-one -on -one coaching from experienced instructors and job placement assistants. Within this course, you get more than 300 hours of theories combined with real-world applications and practical skills you can apply on day one on your job. At the end of the program, our students can be certified as Red Hat Systems Administrator, AWS Cloud Engineer, AWS Security Specialist. Visit our website at www.dynamictechacademy.com to register. Yes, thank you, gentlemen, for for being that patient with us as we go about the technical hurdles to bring you on board. Good evening and welcome, Barista Team, Barista Mesa, uh, Barista Fru, Barista Dana, and Dr. Tita. You're welcome. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Paddy. Greetings, Senior Barista. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you, Dr. Tita, for greeting us. Good to see you. Good to see you on the screen. Welcome, Dr. Tita. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we, we're going to have a very brief discussion on this aspect and look on other things that are related to it. We will also be examining why Cameroon is strategically taking advantage of the situation for some propaganda. Uh, Mr. Frundi, as you all know, passed away. Dr. Tita is maybe facing some challenges to connect. Passed away a few days ago. And uh, strangely, his own people in Bamenda are uh, literally despising. You don't see the. If it wasn't the 90s, you will have people from Bamenda crying all around the place and all around the world. In fact, Saudi Cameroonians would have made a big deal of a loss of a man who presented himself in the early 90s as a hero. It's important that we talk about that, contrary to the wish of a few. Um, what are the lessons that those who are enablers today, or what are some of the lessons we can draw from Mr. Frundi's political opinion as we navigate our way towards freedom. Maybe I should start with you, Barista Mbesa. Well, I hope you're not starting with Roman. <laughs> now, let me... Unless you want to be wrong. Uh, well, I'm trying to explain why I might be wrong. Uh, I think uh, the title itself gives me concern. Nifrundi 
is not an enabler. No. An, en an enabler is a team member. Maybe you want to sit a little bit ahead so we can see you better, Mr. Yeah. Team. An, an enabler, by my own definition, is a team member, one time team member who tends to become an enemy. And I think, by my own opinion, Mr. Frundi has never been a team member for Ambazonia from day one. Yes, those, the people conceived the SDA might have thought about that. But the leadership went to a wrong man who has never for a moment tried to think that he was defending Ambazonia. No? So I call him not an enabler, I call him an enemy. And let me cure off from what you just said. The people in Bamenda, I'm sorry to say, by my own opinion, are not despising Nifrundi. No. Nifrundi despised the people of Bamenda. <laughs> not the people of Bamenda despising him. When Mr. Nifrundi was alive, he made his choices. I would not need to impose our will on him. For example, he chose to despise his own hometown, Bamenda. And he chose to go and stay in Yawonde, in a place he thought was more comfortable for him than his own hometown. So if I were there, what would I be telling his brothers and sisters who are left in Bamenda? Brothers and sisters who are sorry for his death. But let him rest in peace where he chose to be. Those who want to mourn him can go to his mansion. Yeah, one day I'm on him there. Again, I think Neil Frundi, for me, was just a fortune seeker. He was not a politician. All what he could say about politics is that if he won the country, if he won the election, he will form a federation. But he never defined how that federation was going to defend the interests of Ambazonians. Never. The idea of federation is just too vague. And so he, he was not going to form a federation in our interest. And I think when I had the opportunity, when Bandam was alive, I think 2002, I addressed this issue with him. How will you do these things from a Yaoundé position where you are the minority Anglophone? If there are 20 ministers, 15 of them will be Francophones. If there are 100 persons at the presidency, 80 will be Francophones if are democratic. Are you going to impose your federation on them? He had no answer. And let me say again, the 1961 so-called federation that was so much despised, I will call it no federation at all, at least had something that could protect us as Anglophones, as English speaking, as, a, as an entity. They had in Article 47 that it could not change the character of the country by way of Changing the, changing the federation status, the federal status of the country. That was ruled out. But again, in 47, three, they could amend the constitution other than changing the federal character of the country. They could amend the constitution in other aspects. Protect them. If they want to amend the constitution, any part of it, that will require a simple majority of parliament. But that simple majority must include the majority of each of the federated states. In that assembly, there were 50 members of the federal parliamentarians. And Anglophones, let us call them like this, were only 10. So to pass anything there that would change the constitution, they required to have six of them voting for it. Otherwise, it would not pass. There was some type of minimal protection. And so that said, let me go back to Mr. Neil Frondi because that's where we are. I call him yes. a fortune seeker. He's a fortune seeker. You have called him this two major things. You have called him two major things a fortune seeker, a fortune seeking. And you have also said it, 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 it is too gracious for us to call him an enabler. He was an enemy. Yes, I've said so. I could not have let, me go to his, let me go to his fortune seeking capacities. This is a man who rose to the level of chairman of a party. He had no other income. 
He had nothing doing other than selling in a bookshop. The, book, the bookshop that I had, to, I had the opportunity to visit many times before 1990. The whole overall capital of that bookshop was not even up to 500,000. But where, is, where does Mr. Nifun stand today in terms of money? I think he should be one of the richest people in Amazonia. Who rose from nowhere to building mansions at the commercial avenue for money? Who rose from nowhere to owning ranches all over the country? Who rose from nowhere to building mansions out of pocket in Yaoundé? Where did he get this money? What was his paid job? Mr. Nifrundi is the only one I can remember, a party leader who was placed on some direct or indirect uh, government uh, salary. For every election that he participated, he received 250 million or something around that amount. We wish he used it for himself. He was the only MP, uh, the only party leader who when he had the peak of his power, which would be something parliamentarians, who were paying him per diem just for standing <laughs> elections under his party. And above all, yeah, seriously. And above all, I don't know any other Ambazonia, politicians and non politicians alike, who has enjoyed the largest of Yaoundé up to the standard of Mr. Frundi. This is Frundi, he's not a government worker. Talk less of his wife, or wife. This is Frundi, whose wife is sick. We have Ambazonians who have been very sick, even government officials. And he has the largest of his wife being, being taken care of, being sent to a hospital in Switzerland. And he's dead, she's dead, she's brought back, and her barrier is taken up taken care of by the state. This is Mr. Nifrundi himself, not a government worker, nothing. Who takes aid? The government evacuates him. They have refused to evacuate civil servants in that country, senior civil servants who have all died there. They evacuate him. He dies. They bring back his corpse. And I suspect they are trying to give him a state funeral. Why? Namjoe died. He was away. <laughs> I mean, others have died. I didn't see any opposition leader giving that of treatment. And above all, if we look at our forefathers, the Endelists, the Funchas, the Mooners, who I don't remember anyone, for example, <laughs> who had a house full of Yaoundé. The other one to live in Yaoundé was by circumstances, E.T. Igwe. He lived there because he was working for the government and they gave him a house. He lived there until he died. Even when he took ill, he sought evacuation. He was not given one, he died there. So how do you think this man is one of us? This is, I don't know where anybody knows any house standing in Bamanda, senior place is in Bamanda, call Funchal's house. <laughs> or call even Mona's house. So is this one? Is this my one of us? I don't think so. And so yeah, and you we, should are... rightly, we should rightly call him an enemy to us and a friend to the enemy. Let him get what that, that's what he wished. He wished to be buried there. He was treated there. The other thing that was left of Funcha that we saw a few days ago, but it was not yesterday. The build a statue in Dwala for Funcha. Where is that thing today? They pull it down. They pull it down. They pull it down. Drag it there. Francia is not the only man. Uh, in the, uh, uh, what they call him? Frundi is not the only man who died. Chimindere <laughs> just died in Boya. His son was also in there, you know. He was an architect of this, uh, this this state. Who buried him? Yes, the buried in Guafa. Yes, the buried uh, Mokete. Yes, but this way they were buried in their capacity as members of their party. So whether they're using government money or not, we know that in Cameroon, there's no difference between the treasury 
of the of the state and the treasurer of the CPDM. So on what mm -hmm. basis, on what status was it led, Mr. Uh, Mr. Frundi, giving all this red carpet treatment? These Again. privileges. Yes, Those are some of never, the things we're going to get into as we he never, progress. He never caution for us. He's not to offer us. There's no reason for us to stand up for him when he's no longer there. Let his brother, his sisters, his friends go bury him where he wished. He left the people of Bamanda to die, to suffer, and die. Why he goes to yeah, yeah, safety? Yeah, but yeah, we're going to get into how no, Bamanda should that, That's my little contribution for now. Yeah, we'll get, and I think. There was no better way for us to have commenced this discussion other than having you give this interlude <laughs> or should i say monologue of it by the fru your senior colleague like you call him all the time says that fundi is an enemy of the nation of amazonia and a fortune seeker of la republic de cameroon please maybe you want to cue in from there yes thank you paddy I agree with my senior colleague, but I want to add that he was not just an enemy, but he was a traitor of the people of the Southern Cameroon, people who made him what he was. Uh, I want to load, let you let Ambazonians know that I had I spent ten years in the SDF, and I rose right up to the National Executive Bureau neck under Mr. Frundi. I don't want to get into how my participation at that time when I was a young lawyer, just arrived from the United States and I was practicing in Douala. And I, I got I got bought over by the launching of 26 May 1990 in Bamenda, where I was present. That's my village at Ndarko. Trundi used the fact that him and his cousin, Dr. Sika Asaga, were the only two who accepted to launch the SDF in Tarinkun on the 26th of May. And from there on, he used the fact that he was already popular in the CPDM, not so popular because he lost the election of the of the of the uh, the, the, the party. The party, the the the, 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 the CN, I mean the CPDM party in in Mezam to Achidiachu. and that got him frustrated. And when he lost, when they when he assisted his cousin, and they launched the SDF in Tarnkun, he was he was launching as president and his, his cousin as secretary general from the beginning. They galvanized the population of Bamenda. That day, we lost six Ambazonians were gone down by La Republic of Cameroon. I will not forget that day. I, that's my village. So I was I happened to be there that weekend. And Trundi became popular. His cousin was not as popular as he was. He galvanized Ambazonians not only in the northern zone, but also in the southern zone. And I want to tell the uh, Ambazonians that up to when he went for presidential election in 1992, he received, we were, uh, the SDA received nothing from La Republic of Cameroon as subvention. And you know that he won the election of 1992. All of us know. I know because we galvanized the election in Douala and he swept through the whole the city of Douala. And Bia lost that election and yet he seized it. I remember when Trundi was in captivity in his compound, when uh, uh, the Archbishop Desmond Tutu visited him in Tarnkol, Trundi was a very, very, very popular. 1996. From there on to 1997, he was popular, very popular and among Ambazonians, more especially. And of course, some few Bamle case from 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 uh, from Bapusan. 1997, something dramatically happened. 
because Frundi, like my colleague said, is a fortune seeker. Before I get there, he he had he organized a farm in Wum and got the avant-garde, what you used to call avant-garde, that is uh, the guards of the of the party, to work for free. He established a lot a lot of ranches in Dop and all the other places and got party militants work for him for free. That's how popular he was. And he started making his fortune. And then something happened in 1997. He went to Europe and we were there on the ground preparing for the 1997 election. Frundi met, I don't know with whom in France, and finally met Bia somewhere in Geneva. Oh, Bia's people, I don't have the facts, but that's the rumor we had. And I will tell you, buddy, Frundi called from there and said he is not a candidate. And all indications was that he was going to win the election of 1997 if he was a candidate. He declined, he said, he will not, we will not, the party will not go for that election. And it shocked every party militant. It shocked everybody. Romo started that he had taken money. He had taken, the French had organized and he has taken money, one, it almost one billion or two billion, whatever the amount, we don't know. And that is how the tables changed. Brunding now became what a person... A window had, dresser. Yes, and he started attacking all those who were against him. Or who were, who, no, who had a different view, not that they were against him. What well, a different but, view? Yes, who, that is those within the party who had a different yes, view. The, party, that within the, party, the first victim was Barista Muna. They got their article eight two. That is uh, Ben Muna. Ben Muna, followed by four some four university professors from Yaounde, Doctor Chalimbok, Doctor Dorothy Com. These are francophones, and one they dwell, and there were four of them. They were all excluded because they came with open eye. You know, their university teachers, they saw, they, 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 they had their own point of view, how the party would develop and so on, because the party now was becoming national. He got them excluded. No, the party had become national, and this party yes. was trying to seize control from... Um, uh, when Abemukom conceived this thing, this party thing from England, it was supposed to fight for the Anglophone cause. Frundi changed the, the whole plan. Yes, when he launched the party, and we, and we discuss it, they changed the whole plan. The second and that is where, Barista Fru, I want to intersect you for a little bit and, and, and get into Barista Ghana because you just hit the name. No, no, no. Let me After speaking for seven me. minutes. No, 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 but yeah. you are cutting. No, let me finish. Let me finish. In a, a, a Frundi destroyed Ben Muna, destroyed uh, a Secretary General Siga Saga. A new Secretary General came on call, uh, uh, Professor Asongani. He destroyed him, ousted him. The next one was Professor uh, 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 Tamajong. She's still in Yaounde now. It's, 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 it's an it's English-speaking woman who had a PhD, I mean, who was a teacher in the University of Yaounde. He was his next secretary general after Asongani. He, 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 he destroyed her. And there were a series of people that came into the party and were destroyed by this man. He had a way of painting you black so that every time that the, the, the A2 thing came up for discussion, they passed it immediately and you are out of the party. No hearing from you, nothing. There was nothing like a hearing to be excluded from the party. They were using an article called Article 82. I know it because I was inside. Buddy, I will tell you that Frundi started selling the SDF to Francophones after 1997. 
And since then, he had enriched himself. First, Pierre started giving 500,000, 500, 500 million to the SDF for every political for, for every election. And the SDF lost every election since then. And that money, the management of that money was so opaque, nobody knew how it was being managed. But that's what it is. I happen to be I happen to be one of the the six national advi legal advisors in, in NEC, what you call the National Executive Committee, with, with Mr. Bandam and others. And we defended the party in the Supreme Court. Do after every election, election contest at the Supreme Court, we were at the forefront. And I tell you, Prundi is not only a, a, an enemy, is a traitor of the people of the South Cameroon because he used them to climb. And when he got up, when he got up on top, he threw the ladder. He threw the ladder and yeah, thank you, enemy. thank you, thank you very much, Pastor Fro. I definitely get back to you. That was very elaborate. About ten minutes there, um, Pastor Ghana. You you've heard them. They're saying almost the same thing. I like the fact that Barista Fru gave us some pra some details, practical details, that was demonstrative of Frundi's character. And it is this character that we are processing. Why? Because he's a Southern Cameroonian born who had an opportunity and unfortunately who used it for him for himself or self-aggrisement and will place the people in a very the tremendous situation. The rise of Frundi was at a very sensitive time. His party came to the limelight just about five years after Bia had seceded, according to Von Goji, from the failed union. Mr. Bia had renamed the both countries using his name. And practically, based on this sound lawyer, Mr. Bia had simply annexed or was illegally occupying Saudi Cameroons. That was a sensitive time when the leadership of the Saudi Cameroons movement had grown to some level of intellectual maturity. Things could have happened. The U.S. Uh, representative or ambassador in the Cameroon, in fact, on um, declassified documents, which I have some as I'm doing my, my research, the United States of America specifically want the Bia's government in 1983 in that the way they are going today will surely happen at that time the in the both Cameroons because two years after Mr. Bia took over power the country went into an economic crisis one of the worst economic crises they've ever had from 1986 so you would have the both countries were frustrated of bad leadership and so Frundi will be given a limelight or comes to the spotlight which some thought he would have used that as an opportunity to just help solidify the Saudi Cameroonian movement for total freedom but here we are today and that's how I think you have to process that historical fact over to you Mr. Ghana Thank you, Comrade Paddy, uh, for that reflection on that very, very honest uh, reflection from uh, Senior Barrister Mbessa and Senior uh, Barrister John Funso. Um, and they've they've been they've been pretty forthright in what Frundi represents to the Ambazonian psyche, as well as what. Frundi represents to the supposed union, which, as you rightly said, either you can categorize uh, French Cameroon as having seceded from it, or you can more legitimately uh, classify it under the supposed union because the union never happened. But there are three groupings of Southern Cameroon's leaders there are three groupings of ambazonian leaders and i just want to assess it from the point point of where frundi falls you have the the compromisers you know um and and and, and there are a lot of them but these are the main ones that you can you, you can add a, a lot of them to this gap 
you have people like Estimuna, uh, Mr. Egbert Tabi, uh, Enoni, uh, Musonge, uh, Fonka Shang, uh, Benjamin Etoy, Frundi, and people like Fon Angwafo. So these are the compromises. And, 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 and these are the people who are focused on the crumbs on the table of, of ROC and are willing to sacrifice the sovereignty of Ambazonia. And then you have a second group. There are three main groups. Then you have a second group. Uh, and, and this second group, I'm just going to call three main pe people in this second group. There, there, there are certainly more. But you have people like uh, Albert Mokong. You have people like Dr. Siga Asanga. You have people like uh, Ben Muna, lawyer Ben Muna. And these are people who believe that we can resuscitate or we can revive the Federation. They believe that the Federation was meant for something good. And they believe that there the, the was and is a greater good of having a Cameroon Federation. And 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 the thing that by fighting for the rights of anglophones or the rights of ambazonians in that federation you can uh, 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 revive and seek some good out of what that supposed federation is so you have these three people uh mr abed mukong dr siga sanga and somebody like barrister ben muna and then you have a third group, which is the, the, the wing of where we are right now in this struggle. You have people like uh, Ambassador Fossung. You have people like Pao Augustin Dangam. You have people like Honorable Bobe Joa of Blessed Memory. You have people like Pa Litumbe. And of course, you have somebody that I have a lot of respect for and who has been a foundation of this struggle, His Royal Highness von Goji Fogum Dinka. And so, what does Frundi represent? And how can we characterize the evolution of Ambazonia's struggle for sovereignty? And how do we place Frundi there? Abarastan Beheza said something very uh, very critical. He said Frundi is not an enabler. He says Frundi is an enemy. Um, I don't know if I would use the word enemy, but, and I don't attach a lot of blame to Frundi. I don't, uh, Frundi, uh, in the long run, Frundi is going to be inconsequential, and I'll tell you why. You know, if you go back to the Gospel of Christ, and if you go back to uh, when God Almighty, consistent with what the Bible teaches us, wanted to send somebody to come liberate his people, to come uh, through grace and liberate his people and free us from sin or whatever you, you may want to call it. God sent somebody who was convinced of that mission. God sent somebody who could carry that mission in his heart. God sent somebody who was a true disciple of that mission. And if God has sent somebody like Satan to come represent that mission, it would have failed because we know both the nature and the nature of who Satan is. And so my blame is not on Frundi. There are five main people who were known to have conceived the, the SDF. These five main people, and my senior barristers here can correct me if I'm wrong, included Albert Mukong, uh, Robert Mbanga, uh, Mr. Clement Gwasiri, uh, Justice Nyok Wakai, and of course, they inter they're one of the foremost intellectuals amongst them, Dr. Siga Asanga. Of these five people who sat and conceived the, the SDF, people like Barrister Ben Muna came in later, but of these five people, at that time, consistent with the laws of the Republic of Cameroon, you had to have two signatures to launch a party. Now, um, I think it's Barista Mbessa who rightly said, the, the, the seat of conception, the intellectual seat of conception of the SDF 
came from Albert Mukong, and then he grouped the, the others. But when they were going to register the party, Albert Mukong at that time was locked up uh, in Douala. I think was locked up with one other uh, uh, French Cameroon activist. Uh, was his name a Kindi or something like that? Uh, and but you needed two signatures to be able to deposit the registration of the of of the of the SDF. And this is where the SDF fails. Things succeed from the beginning or they fail from the beginning and everything that happens subsequent to that are just symptoms of an initial failure and that is why we have to appreciate where we are with the interim government because the interim government was conceived during the fourth conclave of what was conceived as the leadership of the struggle that morphed into the SDF I mean uh, into the interim government and by the grace of God, we are still with that same constitution. We are still with that foundation. There are incursions of this, uh, from, from the side uh, attempting to destroy the interim government. But under the leadership of Dr. Samuel Sacco, the interim government still stands. But what was the issue at the, of, of the formation of, of, of the SDF? One of those initiators was willing to carry the cross. To Calvary. Four of them were not willing to. Justice Nyo Wakai, uh, Mr. Ngwasiri, um, Robert Banga, none of them were. Albert Mukong was locked up, so um, Albert Mukong could not sign. And so it was as Baristan Fruit so rightly said, Dr. Siga Asanga did not want that thing to die in his hand. So he went to his relative, I don't know which of them is an uncle to each other, but he went to his, his relative, who was at that time called Mr. Ebibi, because he ran a BB book center in Bamenda. As a young man, I used to go chat with him at a, at a BB book center. He went to a BB and he asked a BB if, if, if a BB could. And a BB had been a courageous, co courageous man. That's Frundi, in case you don't know who I'm calling Mr. Ebibi. He had been a courageous yeah, man. Yeah, I know when I was young, they were calling him Ebibi. The bookshop was a BB bookshop. Right. He had been the president of PWD Bamenda. He had challenged uh, uh, Chidi Achu in Mezam and, 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 and all of that. And he was somebody willing to step his foot in the ring. But the key problem was that the other three people who believed in the message, who believed that the SDF could be formed as a party to address the concerns of the Southern Cameroons in the supposed Federation of Cameroon, were not willing to sacrifice themselves. They said they had young children, just as young Wakai said, he's glad his young children. Uh, the other gentleman, Gwasiri, who was a professor at the University of Yaoundé, he had a government job, he did not want to lose his job. So they had their excuses, and so it fell into the hands of an opportunity. And so that is where the SDS failed. The SDF failed at its conception. And that is why whenever Frundi came to a junction, if he was going to choose sacrificing himself to free the people, remember the message of Christ. He was, even Christ said in the garden of uh, Gethsemane, if it is your will, Lord, let this cup pass away from me. But God said, and he carried the cross. Whenever Frundi came to that point where he needed to carry the cross. He bucked. He buckled at the knees. And that is because he never believed in the mission from the get-go. But it wasn't his fault. Because the people who believed in the mission were not willing to sacrifice their petty privileges in life. So it's not Frudy's problem. Frudy is an opportunist who took the opportunity and cashed in. But the people who believed in it did not want to sacrifice, which is why I want to focus more on the lesson of the SDF, how it applies to us in the struggle. We who believe in the struggle, we who believe in the freedom of Ambazonia, we who, who believe in the rightful sovereignty of Ambazonia, must do all we can to sacrifice towards the liberation of Ambazonia. We must do all we can to ensure that the leadership of persecuting this struggle to its rightful conclusion 
does not fall into the hands of the wrong people, does not fall into the hands of people like you name it. All of those who have been negotiating to sell this re a, a, rev a, a revolution, those are just other clowns or, or other clones of Frundi. But again, as a young man, when I used to visit from the, I was there at Darakon, by the way, Barista and uh, uh, So we were there at the launching of the of the SDF at the Tarikun Park on that, on that afternoon where we had a little rain after after we launched it. We led the rally marching from Tarikun Park through Longla onto Commercial Avenue yeah. where yeah. Bamenda was militarized and they killed six activists there. We were there. We were the ones who marched because we had hope in the SDF. But let me tell you what the SDF represents. One, the SDF represents an attempted solution of the problem of Ambazonia that did not address the root cause. If you read the articles of the, of the SDF and the preamble, and they talk about the four state federation, which is their vision for Cameroon, they don't address that, the sovereignty of Ambazonia. That's ridiculous. The four state, the four state just, just uh, intercept. That four state, to my opinion, I've studied it very closely, was a, was a clear partnership with France to neutralize annihilate disappear the southern cameroons correct because in when that state the country state, there will be nothing yes. like southern cameroons correct so they talk about the four the four states federation but they do not address the sovereignty of ambazonia even the united states senate that studied the problem in its resolution 684 talks about addressing the problem consistent with the root causes of it and what are the root causes? The non-implementation of UN Resolution 1514-XV and 1608-XV as it applies to Ambazonia. So the whole vision of the SDF was false from, from the get-go. Number two, the SDF represented a well-crafted attempt at the solution of Ambazonia. However, as I said, the messenger was crooked from the beginning. The messenger did not believe in the message. Number three, the SDF is the SDF is water under the bridge. Because before I even go to number three, I I, I was a friend to Honorable Bandam. I used to go visit Frundi and Tarikun and, and his father. By the way, which party with so much money flowing into it could not even pride itself of one hall one party hall not one i asked uh, uh, honorable bandam i called him here from the united states i used to call him all the time and i said what? i said i used to call him nijo because he was like a senior brother i said nijo people cannot build one hall what is happening all of this money you're... he said you don't understand it's tough to raise bs they never believed in the liberation of of of, of Ambazonians. They believed in using so, it so as a In essence, by Kagaran, um, they themselves were not even free from, from their mindset, so they couldn't have uh, partnered or front a freedom movement. Am I correct? Correct. correct. But they were not mentally. But it's not just about being mentally free. If you say it's about being mentally free, then you miss it a little bit. The composition of a person's integrity, personality, yeah. and character is a combination of nature and nurture. So there are, there are certain things that form the template of a human being that you cannot change. You cannot mentally liberate a, 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 a Mbumbutu Seseko, Seseko to being a Lumumba. You cannot mentally yeah. liberate a a a what a blaze compare to being a sankara you cannot mentally liberate a chief Gutelezi to being a mandela so these people were already faulty from the template you cannot mentally liberate a chris anu to being a dr sako you cannot so it is not just a no problem way. of being mentally free it's a problem we're, of we're gonna get into 
We're going to get into that as we conclude. How that does it is when it comes to nature and nurture. Let me, I just have two more. Let me finish. So the SDF represents a stage where us Ambazonians were begging French Cameroon for a solution that accommodated us. That is why they went through this four state. That is gone. We are seeking the sovereignty of Ambazonia, not being part of French Cameroon. Number four, it represents the Saudi Cameroons giving legitimacy to French Cameroon as a colonizer. As His Royal Highness von Gojidinka said, which Barristan Beheza rightfully pointed, and again, that's, that's the man I call a father. He lives, he lives in Europe. I call him from time to time and, and we talk. So you would say for over 30, for over three decades, the SDF would have contributed for three decades, uh, contributed into the slavery of Southern Cameroon for three decades, if I'm correct with that analogy. Well, correct it did. Correct it did. But God works in mysterious ways. God uses faces to transition things. The SDF represented a transition to where we are. And maybe by the will of God, it was necessary. Sometimes when things happen, yeah. say, in all things, give thanks. The yeah. SDF represented that bridge to educate our people. So no, number five, it represents our need to be the vanguard of who we, uh, we elect, we appoint, we support to lead this struggle. Because if you, if you support a wolf, you're going to get the products of a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, and the last one, it represents our ability also to be a vanguard on the resources that are raised to manage the revolution. Because like I said, not even one party hall was built. Who holds neck meetings in his home? Who transforms his home into a, 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 a whole palace and then makes the whole party about him? I remember when there was a journalist in Cameroon interviewing Frundi. I think his name was uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Tampo. And he asked Frundi, he said, you know, you're getting old. Have you thought about strategizing on who your successor is going to be? Frundi's answer was very encapsulating of who Frundi was. Fruni says, Mr. Tampu, you come from the Tampu family. Your father has, is still alive. Has he talked about his succession? So he saw the party as his thing. So in terms of the liberation of Ambazonia, in what they call the supposed Cameroon, Fruni, he, he, he was inconsequential and the sdf was consequential only to the extent that it represented a transitional phase of our struggle which leads us to where we are and which leads us to focus on what ambazonians are focusing on which is the military option to liberate ambazonia thank you Thank you, um, Mr. Jana. I think before we, we get back to conclude on some of the lessons that we'll have to learn, the consequences of such um, unscrupulous behaviors by some elites would lead to our people being massacred. This morning, we have reports of over 20 civilians slaughtered targeted, shot at gunpoint by the BS government. And on the 20th, that is in the next three days, we will be having the World Refugee Day. We have the Secretary of State for the Department of Health and Social Services here, who has been doing a lot of work. Cue in to this, Dr. Tita, you want to tell us why you've not been on TV. And I think this is a chance for you to talk to, you, to our people in this delight. Your, the floor is all yours. 
Thank you so much, uh, Director Padi. Uh, greetings, uh, Senior Barista Team, Barista Fru, and my brother, Barista Ghana. Uh, I'm so extremely glad to be here on this panel. Uh, please, Director Padi, I think, uh, yeah, like you said, that the World Refugee Day is coming up, which is uh, June 20th, uh, or that's Tuesday, June 20th. But I think uh, for me to just come in to chime in, in only the aspect of the refugee is going to be kind of unfair with the discussion of uh, Frundi that has been going on. Our lawyers have been talking about it and uh, ever since the show started. But I'm, I'm going to just chip in uh, where you want me to step in right now. Like what uh, Senior Barista team said earlier, they described Fru Ni John Frundi like uh, an enemy to the struggle, or Senior Barista Fru described him as a traitor. Uh, these are real facts. Uh, that our lawyers are talking about. And let's not be mistaken here. SDF was created as a political party in, La, in Cameroon, La Repugio, Cameroon, and not as a party that was fighting for the Southern Cameroonian cause. Let's make this very clear. And now as Frundi is gone, so the SDF should go. Because as the uh, Barista Ghana rightly said, that for the past 30 years, LDF has been giving legitimacy to La Repugio, Cameroon to continuously colonize our territory. So it's about time they leave. And no one should ever think or believe that Frundi, Nijon Frundi, or late Nijon Frundi, had any hope for the people of Southern Cameroon, but his personal interest. We want to make this fact very clear so everybody gets it. Because now is the time that he's not there anymore. La Amazonia or Southern Cameroon has nothing, nothing to do with La Repugio, Cameroon. Senior Barista uh, Fru said it very clearly here that uh, SDF came into, into to being after the regime of La Repugio du Cameroon accepted multipartism. Not that Ni John Frundi created multipartism in Cameroon. No, 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 no. It's after the regime has accepted it and after Ni John Frundi lost the election against uh, 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 late uh, Achidi Achu, the Prime Minister, then Section President election, that they went now and created. SDF. It was not SDF that brought multipartism in La Republic of Cameroon. And SDF being created as a political party in La Republic of Cameroon had nothing to do with the Southern Cameroonian plight. I want to make this fact very clear. These are the, I'm not going to call them like a senior barrister team, I want to say they, we shouldn't use the word enablers, but enemies to the struggle. These are enemies to the struggle. Von Gordidika actually said it before when they went to the United Nations and they came back and the discussion or the decision that was made. Frundi is the one that killed it. Frundi killed that. The killings that are going on today on the ground in our territory in Southern Cameroon is thanks to the help of Frundi, him. There is nothing anyone needs to mourn in Amazonia in regards to this fellow, Nijon Frundi. He was there because of his own interests and, and he did everything to enrich himself throughout that process. La Repubblica Cameroon has killed and massacred our people in our territory. Over 30,000 of our people have been killed. Over 500,000 of our people are suffering in neighboring countries as refugees, thanks to the help of these this, this enemies to the struggle. Because they are still sitting there and they are not talking about the killings that are happening. Go and check at the level of the United Nations High Commission uh, for Refugees Office there in Nigeria. We have influx coming in on a daily basis. So many people still coming in to register as refugees in Nigeria because of the hard work of all of these traitors and enemies to this struggle. Both those that are there on the ground that have been there and these useless ones in the diaspora causing confusion every day. So there at no point in time would I read or listen to any line that Fruji did anything in favor of the Southern Cameroonian's plight because no, he did not. He was a CPDM representative in our territory deceiving our people uh, you know, enabling uh, uh, French Cameroon colonialism in our territory in the name of SDFO and opposition group, deceiving our people every day. So that is what we have to deal with. And that's what we are dealing with now that we have so many refugees there over there in Nigeria, over 125,000 refugees in Nigeria. And the numbers are increasing on a daily basis. Over 250,000 of our people have fled into neighboring French Cameroon in a country where they cannot speak French or even understand the language. Because of these, uh, these, these enemies or traitors that are sitting there in the territory that deceiving our people to believe that we are a part of La Repugio Cameroon while we are not. As Fundi is dead and is gone, so is SDF 
out of that territory. We don't want any any of them there. They are the ones enabling La Republic to Cameroon. They are the ones legitimizing La Republic to Cameroon colonialism in our territory. Our people are suffering on a daily basis. In Nigeria, there's no food to eat or even shelter place to stay. People are sick without, we can't even get their help because the UNHCR does not even have the funds to help support them, even with everything that they do. And because of all of these fellows, supposed elites that are sitting down there in, in neighboring La Republic Cameroon, they've left their territory and they're staying in Yaoundé or wherever they call it, or Duala, or wherever they want to call that area. So it's unacceptable. As so as Nijon is gone, so is the SDF dead and buried in the territory in Amazonia. None of that Cameroon supposed multipartism that does not exist should be there in the territory because those are Nijon was a, is a CP, was a CPA man. And you could see it. I, and what I'm saying is factual because you even see with the, the other guy they called, uh, I don't know if the other opposition leader there in La Republic Cameroon called Belo Buba, that was appointed one of their ministers. They call them opposition leaders. Those are representative of the CPDM government in an effort to show the world that there's democracy in La Republic Cameroon. Why is not? Very good. So bring it, Very back good. To, bring it back to thanks to the leadership of the president and the interim government, thanks to the great diaspora community that is so passionate about a free homeland. We are where we are today. Uh, I'm very grateful because La Brie Cameroon, in all their efforts, tried everything they could. From 2020, when we are over our peak, to 2021, when we are at highest peak, to destroy this interim government and to destroy the struggle. There's when they team up with uh, that useless one they called uh, 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 Ayabacho there, that useless guy there, the other... Uh, 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 the, the, the other seller, chief seller, Chris Anos, that have collected huge money from the colonial prime minister's office with his brother, Phil Masha, I mean, to destroy this struggle. Then the, the, the other one confused lady there uh, that doesn't know that their priorities right. Causing confusion in this struggle, trying to destroy this struggle, struggle to enable La Republic to come around to continue their colonialism in our territory. Our people are suffering on a daily basis. The calls we get are so many people are struggling for survival. The interim government. You see, Doctor, I like something. That, Dr. I like something you said there, which I want to cue you into to wrap up with some of the things you're doing, um, so that we can wrap up the program today and not make it a little bit too long. This, this is the point. You have just said something which I think is amazing. You, you're saying that from the the SDF was never created for Southern Cameroons and that it was created for Cameroons. I think to some extent you are very correct because the, the, those who came together, the minds, like you've heard historians mention this evening, really didn't come to have a Cameroon National Party like the SDF ended up. So it was an idea that was botched and these are some of the lessons I feel we can learn as a people. This bad idea where they thought that solution could come from Yaoundé. So the ADF was the SDF was actually created to seek for solution from Yaoundé. And Yaoundé proactively sent agents like the CPDM Frundi who came and destroyed the whole idea. Now the consequence of these elders or, or, or allies doing their own thing, not necessarily the thing for the people, are the refugees that we have millions of them or displaced people globally right now you have been involved yes. with this for at least five to six years uh first of all under college and now as secretary of state for for the fifth year running uh, you've done so much your your works are clear and out there for all to see and i know ahead of the 20th you're doing something big what's the vision what's the plan and your caption is hope the caption of this year which i think the president has queued into it squarely is hope away from home can you tell yes. amazonians donors who are watching the, uh, watching us now that would like to participate do you want to tell us what is it 
about this year's celebration of the World Refugee Day? Thank you so much again for that question. Uh, the vision of the department, what we follow is the vision of the president. Everything we do is the vision of the president, Dr. Samuel Ikome Sako. Hope from home, hope from away from Ambazonia. Our fellow Southern Cameroonians refugees in Nigeria, all across Africa and all over the world. The president of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia, His Excellency Dr. Samuel Ikome Sako, has, is working extremely hard in making sure that uh, this, this struggle comes to an end in the quickest time possible for the Amazonian people to be free. And so all of us can go back home and we can live home, live at home. There is no place more comfortable or better to stay than home. And we are fully aware of that. Uh, and we're doing everything possible in making sure that that happens in the quickest time possible. Now I'm here to assure you that there is hope thanks to the great work that this interim government have been doing, our legal minds that have been working behind the scenes, uh, even our lobbies, lobby firms that have been working, there is hope. This interim government is reaching out and continuously reaching out in our diplomatic efforts uh, in making sure that we get the support or the recognition that we need from in the individual organizations or big association from uh, companies uh, that uh, 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 that we have gotten in contact with in making sure that we get that rec recognition that we desperately need uh, for us to have a free homeland. As World Refugee Day is coming up, our team is actually working on uh, putting uh, together something on the ground. Uh, thanks to the president and uh, the, the national treasury, uh, they've been working extremely hard in making sure that uh, the counties, oh my God, the counties, uh, the county chairs, uh, the LGA chairs, have all been working extremely hard in the background in making sure that uh, we reach out to our fellow brothers and sisters that are refugees. And that should be coming up uh, on, is it Tuesday, uh, June uh, 20th, hopefully, uh, in making sure I know, that, uh, I know that you people are planning for a lot of things. Actually, I've been a part of those working with you, handing gloves to see that it becomes a reality. But you see, the plight of the Amazonian refugee and the plight of our displaced people, the carnage and genocide that is ongoing in our homeland are intricately linked to some of the things that we've had people do, like the Frundis, and legitimizing Cameroon's endeavor globally. I like the fact you said that now that he's dead and gone, the ADF is dead and gone. According to Saudi Cameroonians, there was really nothing like an SDF party since 2017 when their independence was restored. I'd like us to watch a video of some of uh, Amazonian displaced women expressing their suffering. Right after that, we'll come to have a conclusion as to the lessons that we've learned. We'll take a, a, a remark from someone who has been watching us. And that is where... Uh, a stone into this, or I would say, the tombstone of this discussion. It was important for us to have it because we expose what no media house will be exposing. Just watch this, and we'll be good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Anytime we this video we'll meet up on or meet up with you, I don't come out today for do this video because. The pain was the fear for my heart. I don't know if you keep up anymore. My name is Esther. I come out for Cameroon. I did for Ghana with my picking and my husband. We will run war, we'll come for Ghana. We we'll run stay for Ghana three years, but nothing to write home about. So I don't decide to say, I know we'll die in silence again. I was saying, I come out. I can't beg me to help me. Two days today, my picking and then a house because of school fees. <laughs> I know if we afford them. But for Cameroon, my husband will then a nurse. Me, I'll be the work for SGO's office. But we can't go now. We'll not figure work. We'll do not farming until they can't add price for petrol and transport fare. We'll not fit for buy petrol, pay the transport, go farm. 
water the crops then before we move and go sell them because for you you must water crops if you know water crops no way you don't waste your time so when we fit afford them again we'll stop I try for open small shop. I open so small shop, but capital no day. If I go buy it in for ten thousand, put that inside the shop. We go draw five thousand for house. <laughs> I did not beg. So way my video come across. <laughs> but they help me. But they help me so that I feel add the things there for my shop. Where as I did say, we we'll chop some more. Then they take the rest, go buy the thing that they add them for the. I just want to plead that whosoever come across this my video should help me. Because <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I cannot keep the pain. Inside me anymore. <laughs> My name is Violet. I come out Bamenda, precisely Bali, Nyonga. So I run war. I come for this side due to the crisis. Wait, we really make I come out for that side. Now because the gun shooting was too much, and I even lost my picking through the gun shooting. It will be one day. You just say they be the fine man picking them. My husband, you get for run, he leave we, me and the picking never us. They don't come one night, they broke has them. We here, we start, we come out, start the run we, because they be the broke has them, they move man picking them for us. You here now, I come out carry the picking for my back. I lost three years old son. His name was Peklin Gabga. I don't come out at Baba the picking for my back. I will be pregnant that time. At Baba he would run. As would he run, he go. They shoot my picking. They shoot gun. He catch my picking for my back. Where? My brother there. My sister there. They won't pass me for talking. Because the talking so will pain. Much pain. Because it will be like. So in some way, whenever a member um, I'd be off I she don't for one year, I'll not be able for shooting and swallow them. But he take no water and swallow my chop day. Due to that thing I have high blood, I have to bury my son alone inside the bush because there was nobody to help me. I took leaves and I bury my son with it without somebody helping me. I run. I feel here where I can't burn. When I see a place where we don't come out, we can't be. We'll be there for dry land. We'll be there for place where mosquitoes are not there. But we'll find difficulties for leaf. Difficulties for chop. My brother and my sister them, I beg. We'll not do something. Because he don't pass we, we don't try for back. That back said me, government even see into it whether they fit stop the crisis. We we'll go back for our various home, but we we'll cry. It they like no mean no nothing for government. It they like no mean no nothing. We we'll over cry. I did for years, so tears don't dry for my eye because I don't too much cry. I be high blood patient for my own young age due to the crisis because I lost my first son. My first blood. Since when my mommy born me, and my first blood that way, I be dropping for that down. Where crisis don't carry, I'm go with them. So I cry and I say, I beg, we not have we, we not have we, we the sofa. There's nothing to explain, Pastor Tim. Like I said. These are some of the consequences. Peraventure, we would have had some freedom in the 90s, and this is where we are. Go ahead, sir. Well, since this is almost the conclusion, just give me the opportunity to say something in our last episode. You see, Please. most of the people we talked about, 
Many of them are already dead. And so it's good for us to give them, qualify them for what they are. I said in my initial introduction that the founders of the SDF might have had some good intentions, but they handed this thing to the wrong person in the terms of leadership. And I think that was right. I'm not a member of the SDF, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think there was a provision in that the original understanding that whoever is the chairman of the party will not be a presidential election candidate. But as soon as Mr. Uh, Mr. Ndigo, uh, Frundi got there, he simply, I don't know how he did it, but he abolished that thing. And that's how he found himself as a leader and seized and owned the leadership. So going forward, again, we listen to Gojidinka say somewhere that he had told me, approached Mr. Nifrundi for them to withdraw their candidates from the National Assembly. That was way back in the 1990s. That was a good idea. But he would not do it. But that's not all. I personally, that has been out there for long. I took steps. I called Madam and suggested to him that he put even need to do a complete withdrawal from the National Assembly. Make a symbolic stand out of the National Assembly, even for 10 minutes, and say that this anglophone problem has been addressed. If they address it that day, they will close down the assembly. They will not resume without the 20, uh, 25 or how many applicants were. They will stop. They didn't do it. But going forward, Mr. Ni Frundi had at least an opportunity to redeem himself. When this crisis started, remember what Mr. Wilber did. He went to parliament. He was not demonstrating with us. I simply made a statement that if you don't address this issue, war will break out. And you cannot fight Anglophones with the French army put together. What was the reaction of Mr. Nifrundi? They were chasing him to arrest him. That's why he ran away from the country for making a statement in parliament. But Frundi was asked, I said, well, he didn't consult us. Who didn't authorize him to say that? Now that he is dead, he has not repented. He remains an enemy. Let us go back to, uh, to, to, uh, to Mr. Muna. Now, Mr. Muna, who have known him as a traitor all his life, of course, he enjoyed what he had. But give him credit for realizing that he was on the wrong path, at least before he died. What did he do? He was in the delegation that came to Washington, to New York in 1995. He was there, Funcher was there, this is the founders, to go to the United Nations and say, look, this thing was wrong. At least give him credit for realizing that he'll be on the wrong path. Take Abel Mukong. Abel Mukong was in Fumban in July, 1961. And he was one of those people in Fumban who was say, Oh, let us join our brother. He went there on the platform of the OK, which was part of the UPC. He didn't want to hear any conditions. Oh, no, let us join, join our brothers. And also, not did they join that he was in trouble? They caught him in 1970, locked him for close to eight years, passed the referendum did all that before they even released him. And when he came back, everything had gone. Paul Bia came to power and sent something around he called the Zambu Com Commission that was supposed to go around sampling opinion of what he should do. Abel Mukon wrote a memo to the Zambu Commission where he was, so he said, this thing was a very bad idea. Let us do something differently. 
Zambo Commission never saw the day of life because he was still going around when he was dismissed. And Abu Abemukon again wrote a small book, a pamphlet, What to Do Next, which he outlined what he thought should be done. He realized that we were on the wrong path. And finally, he published his book called Prisoner Without a Crime. Read through the book and see what repentance means. See how you make you turn. So I, I put all this to show that these people are dead. So they have rep repented. Who can forgive them? But Mr. Nifrundi, because he's a topic for today, never repented. His SDF that he let never repented. Madame was even the vice chair of the National Assembly. He did not as much as even put this thing out there. He did not do it. None of them did it. And a good number of them, if not all, were intellectuals. Retired university professors, teachers. So it's not because they didn't know. These were greedy individuals who wanted to benefit from us. And again, since we were there with different, I repeat I would emphasis. He abandoned us, he chose where to be, for no reason under any circumstance. To force him to be very aware, you have no more a choice. Dead people don't talk. Let him be very well is our our ARFs on the ground. She tell his family. If we are part of your family, we'll follow you to your only and condole with you. Let him remain there as a lesson for the future of tomorrow. I'm back to Mr. Titus' big mission. I will say this: look at the Bible. In the Bible, when the Israelites were suffering. You are going over now. There are so many Messiah, false prophets. People didn't know who was the correct one. Even when Christ came, they didn't know. Some of them denied him. Even John the Baptist did not know that John, that Christ was the, was the prophet. That's why he asked when they locked him up to kill him. He sent a messenger to Paul, to sorry, to Jesus. Go ask him, are you the Messiah? Or should respect, respect somebody else? Yes, with all these difficulties, there are so many people claiming to fight for Ambazonia. They are false prophets. This IG that we are is under the leadership of the rightful prophet. Accept him or don't accept him at your own risk. So, as we speak, from the messages that have come from those two ladies, they are just the tip of the iceberg. We cannot solve all their problems, but we can attempt at least to give them bread to eat. We can try at least to give them quinine to drink, to drink when their children have headache. And this is only possible if we each draft, we keep our widow's mind. There's no justification for me taking three square meals and not sacrificing $10 to give a woman child in Ghana to buy Moyondo and eat. To give somebody in Nigeria to buy okra beans and eat. So, I think those women have made their appeal. If people could cry, just watching them, I'm sure many have cried. Even though you might not see the tears flowing down, people have wept. People have wept. They are weeping. What happened in uh, just two days ago? It's just an indication. Yaoni has no plans ever to end this battle until they will kill everybody to submission. Let our battle cry be, we shall not give up, as we have been saying, till the last man standing. Better die for what you deserve, better die for what is yours, than go submit yourself into slavery. That is why slaves, when they boarded the ships, they didn't board it as free men, they were chained. They didn't go into slavery voluntarily. So thank you. I hope this message that we have been sending around will sink to all of us. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Barista Mbisa. Even before we move on, since we're concluding, 
Bachelor Fru, please just give a few minutes for Ochiba to ask a question that could require some of our chipping. Um, Ochiba Nessin, please go ahead. Hello, Director, you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, please. Okay, I did enjoy a for all my way in the for the and uh, uh, say, we're going to continue. We need to do a great job we're going to do for Amazonia people. So, I did just call now because I want to learn something. Um, mm -hmm. Because I have some information for the it is show, like say, they will form SDF now for solve the southern Cameroon's problem. And so one day, they, uh, my problem now, I see if they will form SDF, I mean, SDF will be a national party for La Republic, or they will want part of SDF for form, I mean, for solve uh, with southern Cameroon's problem. Because when they form SDF for 1990, they want to be in 92. If they want to solve a problem, how come? SDF person through the he go for La Republic election during that time. So, so yeah. Because even years before they want form the SDF, they will do consultation until the sense of delegation. You go meet up Francophone people that like you do black and some people that for the other side them. So they will be in something where we concern are we how they will be uh, involved La Republic people for the and why they will be put about the four state agenda plan, uh, plan where they will go for it. So now I want to ask us if now when we declassify the information, see, and I be being a for with one state. That means say when I want to give maybe now uh uh talk. So when I want to tell, tell the republic say they be really get right when they be talk say they not be really fruity, it can't be for palace for it to be because it be there so it be there, it be there, a hidden agenda and now why that way they be taking uh they take it out. Then one thing I want to ask them again, I see, I don't hear when I talk about Babo Chintinka, we get the talk, say, he get video, where he blame Fungi, say, Fungi, they be semi movie parliamentary, and then he deny, and all those kind of things, so now why that way, they be, uh, they think be spoiled. So now I ask the Babo Chintinka to do now, so, say, after that, <laughs> what do you be do? What do you, Babo Chibi do? Wait, excuse me, now when the interim government, in their up, in the final republic for doing what we got in the car, they ready not be able to achieve them. Why, you know, for fit on us, they so me also endorse the interim government. We went to a president's account, it was for final republic because he and Fundy are the same thing. Okay, you don't make your question non clear because your, your question this will be very technical. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. I need to stop you at the job contribute. You don't end. Let him, let him end. Let him end now. We cannot talk all night. Wait, one second. I give plenty of time. His questions have been understood. I give plenty of time for Ambassador Fossil because he endorses interim government. I give plenty of thank you for that. I'm here to advise the front of some people. They don't work out as they are with for inside this struggle today. But my problem, I say, the other one they were there for 32 years where they don't be able to do something. Now, the interim government, they fight. They, 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 cause, they make ghost time, make all that. Why they don't join them? Because you don't play some video for them. I don't see go, I mean, I go away two guys and they, they toss it, they don't go rape them. I was here for, for, for Twitter. Go ahead, they go right and talk to the Republic people, they go to rape people. They be very shameful for years. Go ahead, they go to Twitter, they rape people. They rape people the way. They rape people just a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, and not even one week. They go to talk on Twitter. We go ahead and back, say the concept. I mean, tell me they bring the team up. Now you need to fight internal for me. See, 19, 19, 2019, 2021. So, 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 so. We don't finish this war away like for dinner for the railway people. Now my friend can wear it, my own way of reason too. Now then they be make up before they receive key with people, real with people today. But yeah, they can't make say they reject each other. Uh 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 can't die. Uh 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 can be separated when I say from the spoil so 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 keep what you do now. Thank you. Yeah, uh Basta Fru, before you get in, um Ochiba Nelson, I'm sure you did not listen to the beginning of the show very closely when I gave an introduction now this is the point i just like to make uh, to say that again so that we do not repeat as the uh, commentators will be commenting 
based on what you have said. Now, the reason for the come together when you had late Nanga and Southern Cameroonian elites and leaders, the reason why they came together, you can ask these historians here, they will tell you, their initial purpose of coming together was to provide a solution to the Southern Cameroon's problem. At that time, Cameroon was insisting that it was an Anglophone problem. They, that, that their coming together was even provoked in 1984 when Bia succeeded or change the state, the form of the state, arrogantly. Now, because of the intrusion of people like the Fundi, owing to his political background, owing to his political background, Fundi um, um, became... Um, uh, you are still talking? Are you still talking? No, no, no. You should not monopolize the platform. Um, Ochiba, can you listen? You've just spoken. Can you just listen? Thank you. So, um, the initial idea that created what you, they call the SDF, that instead of standing for what they were supposed to stand, they became a national party. The, the people, the masterminds behind that were doing the same thing other leaders were doing. And their purpose was to help articulate this exact same things of the Southern Cameroon National Council, which is the SCNC. We have evolved today and we are thinking the way we are thinking. I'm sure in 2015 or 2016, you were not thinking the way you were thinking today. Now, for Gojin Dinka, who is still alive, has his reasons, which you have a right to question why he has not made any public endorsement uh, towards President Sacco. A lot of Amazonians haven't done so. But the subject here is, what lessons can we learn from the political opinion of those who took the path they took and led us to where we are today? So, Mr. Fru, please, write on. Yes, uh, thank you, Paddy. Before I say anything, let me, let me congratulate uh, Dr. Tita for, for for his presentation this evening and because uh and, and i will congratulate him with one quote he says the sdf has died with frundi and and i hereby endorsed what dr tita said i take offense when i hear somebody said the sdf was a, was a transition to the struggle I have I was in the SDS for more than 10 years. I did not have the I did not have the slightest idea that the SDF that I, I joined had anything to do with the so-called Anglophone problem. And I want to make it here known that the four state federation that the SDF proposed came after 1997 that I quoted. In, in, in this in this in this in my present my first presentation it was because southern Cameroonians were beginning to question the SDF as to what is going on I have never thought that Frundi had any 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 agenda for solving the problems of the of of of, of Ambazonians or the southern Cameroonians I never thought that until today I'm telling you that Frundi died an enemy. He will remain an enemy. Now, the second point I want to make is that let's not cast aspersions on the leaders that gave their whole life on this on this struggle. Chief, uh, Chief, my 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 dearest, most senior colleague, Chief Gojidinka, has given his whole life for where we are today, even if he's no longer an active participant. He launched the fight. He served a prison, prison term because of the fight. He, is, he lived in exile most of his life, most of his professional life because of this fight. And he's still living in exile today. To me, he is one of the venerated 
fathers of this struggle. And he deserves that right. I am sure that he, because of his age, and because of because we, everybody should know that Gojidinka is now about 93, 94 years old. You don't expect him to behave like uh, uh, my my former boss, um, uh, Panjo Lutumbe, who was who, who was much younger than Gojidinka. Panjo Lutumbe had had a dream for the southern Cameroon being on its own. Uh, that the marriage was in Jumba marriage. Now, you cannot cast aspersions. Nobody should attempt to cast aspersions on Chief just uh, Chief uh, Gojidinka because, as a lawyer, he knows his limitations. He is limited now by age. He is limited now by 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 any utterances that he makes because, as you all, as you get older you lose your memory for those of you who don't understand anything about old age and for a young man to cast as patience on gojidinka i will not take it secondly trundi is the greatest hypocrite the greatest enemy and the greatest like my my colleague put it uh, uh, uh seeker that the southern Cameroonians have seen. He used the southern Cameroonians to climb politically. And on top there, where he now deals and wines to beer, evidenced by the meeting of Trundi in an in, in upstation with beer. I cannot remember the time, but but that's after 1997. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, the peak of where he got to, to get his money to get most of his money and most of the advantages, whether he's a wife, whether he's he himself, because you don't want to forget that Frundi just came back as a dead man from Switzerland. He was in a coma for 10, for 10 days and was evacuated by Paul Beer to Switzerland. And when he got to Switzerland, they told him that the brain was dead, that they, they, they were just waiting for him to, to catch the last breath, that it would be less expensive if they take him back. That's how he came back one day after he died. He has benefited from the system, from the CPDM system that he was original, an original member. And I will argue that Prundi had never changed his membership from the CPDM since when he launched the party with his cousin. And I, I attended the funeral of his of, of a, of a Siga Saga in, in, in Baba, and the wife openly accused Frundi for killing Siga Saga. Openly. And Frundi said he was going to swear on his father's grave. That's a different matter. But it has a bearing on the character we're talking about. Again, I'd like to congratulate Dr. Tita for making this statement. The SDF, I mean, the Frundi has died, so the SDF has died also, and said to pack up and leave the, the, the Ambazonia. The yeah, but for you have belabored your point. I, I think I'd like you to talk about the the consequences of. Let me talk yeah. about the refugees before you before you come before you cut me off, Doctor Peter. Yeah. I'd like to thank you very much for the work you do. Please, please, I hope that you'll be organizing a draft for HSS. Because we need it. No, a fundraiser. They're, they're not doing drafts for HSS. If, if, if you listen, no, 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 let me finish. If you listen to those two ladies, I almost cried here on the, on, the, on the, where I'm sitting. It's very pathetic. And take special note and see what you can do to help the IDPs wherever they are, or the refugees wherever. Not only in Nigeria, they are, they are refugees in Ghana. There are refugees even in Gabon. But I am saying specifically, those two ladies represent our plight. Our, the plight of our people. And they need our help. And the only way, one of the ways that we raise money is a draft. The HSS has not been excluded from the draft. Let's plan and, and execute a, a draft 
that will enable your, your department to help these IDPs. And also, please don't forget that there are prisoners in Yaoundé, in Boya, and in Bamenda, and in Bafusa, suffering, suffering and dying. And your department is doing a very good job. But all I'm saying is that redouble your effort to raise money so that you can have the way, a way to, 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 to bring help to bear on these people. And uh, to conclude, I'd like to congratulate you because you have done a marvelous job and the proof is there to show. Don't let enablers, because in the, in, uh, at that refugee camp, there are enablers there. Don't let enablers hamper your work in any shape or form. Thank you, Barista. Thank yeah, you thank so you very much. much. This is it's quite instrumental that we would have to reiterate. Yeah, but Mr. Fru, um, uh, perhaps you you just missed out. According to government policy, um, uh, the the HSS has actually been excluded from the draft, but not from other forms of mobilizing resources. The HSS, the department, yeah, yeah, the department. The Department of the uh, of, uh, Foreign Affairs. I use draft. I use draft. Yeah. I was not supposed to. Yeah, because it could create some. I thought I, I should help to correct that. Not a draft, but yeah. So, uh, because, because uh, we need it. Barista, I am settling this matter in on you now. Listen to those two ladies. Uh, we need that money. Please. Yes, yeah, Barista Ghana, I'm settling, I'm settling this on your shoulder right now. Yeah, uh, just so I tell people, um, the interim government is already putting logistics together. There are these two departments, the, the, the Department of Women's Services and the Department of the Health and Social Services. They, they have already made accurate plans to reach out to our people, particularly in Ground One and other parts of the world. And that's what President Sako does every year. And it's quite important that we get to reiterate that. So we're talking about um, the President Sako restoring hope. The UN has uh, Christian, the theme of this year as hope away from home. And so every Amazonian following this show, in whatever way you want to participate. I wrote a letter to the Antigua um, Antigua government about uh, people that were in detention centers, some who were rescued from the high sea trying to uh, come over to America. And the Prime Minister of Antigua was not wanting to receive them. Fortunately, the letter I also wrote to the UNHCR in Washington, I spoke, I'm going to give details in the, on Tuesday. I'll send even pictures of my discussion with the new uh UNHCR uh head or director in the americas and the caribbeans the lady met with me on i think i told you about that Dr. Tita, that was on on wednesday yes wednesday i had a conversation we have about 90 minutes and we're talking there, there's hope coming for refugees all around the world so we had a conversation on on what can be done because we're all refugees, I'm a victim, and I kind of feel the plight because some, what are some of these refugees going through? I went through, and I know what I went through. Fortunately, I had some knowledge, so I know how to fight. Think about those who don't know, and they don't have that knowledge, and they cannot fight, and they are faced with the same predicament. So um, I'm working very closely with Dr. Tita and the Indian government to make sure that particularly Ambazonian refugees. The United Nations has suggested they're going to record my story as a way of, and I really want it, strategically, I'm telling them it's because to, of the plight of the Southern Cameroon uh, refugees. But I know if my story, they ask me, am I comfortable for them to send my picture out and my story? I'm like, fine. Because my story is going to help to expose what Cameroon is hiding about our people so you have that and i think on tuesday we'll have a special broadcast and we will stream i'll show you some of the pictures of the meeting i had with the director of the UNHCR in washington 
and it's very important that we we get to go with that i'm looking forward to have an interview with her because there are new solutions that she's bringing for our people that are found in refugee camps or detention centers and in detention in, in different parts of the world with governments that are not willing to collaborate with the united nations human rights uh, agency and the UNHCR agencies to provide solution for them. There are lots of countries who even want to deport these people. And we as Amazonians, as individuals and as a collective, must not let that happen. And this, all of this was to preamble and settle it on your chest, Barista Ghana. I get again to this point. What are the lessons we have learned from this treachery there are lots of words but as Tambese has said he is an enemy he is a, a fortune seeker uh barista uh, fru said he it was a traitor and dr tita just needed it now i'd like you to talk very succinctly the lessons we amazonians as a government today as individuals as activists as those who are having any political interest in the plight of the Saudi Cameroons, what are the lessons we would have learned first of all the way the oppressor behaves and if you give him the chance and how do we put our hands together to provide a solution to these refugees who are suffering very dangerously the brunt of this genocide onslaught in our homeland Buster, Ghana, please. Thank you very much, Paddy, and, and thanks so much to our pa panelists. Point of correction here. I am the one who said the SDF was a transitional face to this struggle. What the inference that was drawn was that the SDF was intentionally a transitional face. That is not what I said. I said the SDF was a transitional phase. It was not meant to be a transitional phase to where we are. But I would say it was a God sent lesson to us Ambazonians to educate us that our prop or, 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 or the solution of to, towards our emancipation was not to seek emancipation as part of Cameroon. And the SDF stood attempted through the uh, uh the 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 greed of frundi and some of the leaders to try to seek some form of accommodation in french cameroon to attempt to run for the presidency in french cameroon and they won the sdf even won the majority vote in Cartier general but what buckled the ability for them to take over power in that country and usher some form of change. I don't know what change they were trying to usher. The fact that we are not part of French Cameroon sovereignty. So the examples of the SDF stand or stood as a lesson to us that the solution of our plight does not reside in French Cameroon. That to solve the problem of Ambazonia, we first have to seek sovereignty. Seek ye first the kingdom, and the realm shall be added unto it. And so there is no false attempt, or there's no legitimate false attempt to say, Ambazonians are going to try to seek a solution of accommodation with French Cameroon, because the SDF have already tried that, and it was a failure. And La Republique and its alter ego France is going to do all it can to dribble Ambazonia. Uh, uh, Amazonians, if they ever attempt that kind of foolishness, which brings us to the liberation struggle, where our struggle rightfully resides. And looking at SDF as an, 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 as, as, as an institution which is now a spent force, points us to what the international community has redirected us to. And I always go back. The United States Senate, in U.S. Senate Re uh, Resolution 6884, has said, there's no way you can solve this problem without addressing the root causes of it. 
Shibonagi has has said, there's no way you can solve the problem by the government of LROC trying to give us some sort of special status. Because when he looked at the problem of Canada, where Quebec being offered what we are being offered, Quebec would never accept it. Again, I look to the German Chancellor, who has outrightly said that problems in the world, especially problems that have to do with territorial disputes, cannot be solved without implementing the foundational principles of the United Nations, which is that boundaries cannot be changed with the use of force. I look again at the words of the United States Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, just about a month ago, saying, the lessons of the Russia-Ukraine war is that no power can be allowed to change territorial boundary with the use of force. So SDF has tried to change it with the wrong notion of trying to change it from within French Cameroon, which is not going to work. And all these examples of these international powers, of these international statesmen, of these international institutions, including the United States Senate Re Resolution 684, point to the fact that nobody is willing to come fight for Ambazonia. So Ambazonia, if you want to do what is right for you, you have to fight for yourself, which brings us to where we are in this struggle. The right of Ambazonia to fight for its sovereignty, the right for Ambazonia to defend its sovereignty, the right for us as Ambazonians, as part of the Ambazonian nation in the diaspora, to do all that is in our power to contribute towards helping Ambazonians on the ground, towards helping our rightful restoration forces who are fighting to defend our people against the genocidal onslaught and killing Ambazonians. Of over 500 villages burnt, of women being raped day in, day out, of children being killed, of our grandparents being burnt in their homes, of unspeakable atrocities being committed on us. As was said in the video that was played uh, by Dr. Tita there, of a woman escaping with, his, with a baby on the back and a bullet catching her first offspring. Of all of these atrocities that have turned Ambazonia into a crime scene. So if you are listening, what is your role? Your role is to rise up deep, 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 deep into your pocket and support the struggle through the interim government, which is the rightful leadership towards emancipating us, towards regaining our sovereignty, towards ensuring that the grandchildren of Ambazonia do not have to fight this fight. And let's make no mistake. Let's not think any group that is formed or that has been formed to fight for Ambazonia can settle for less than our sovereignty. Let's not make the mistake to think that this generation is the only generation that can liberate Ambazonia. If we do not do it rightfully, generations down the line will do it. But if we are going to try to liberate Ambazonia, we cannot undermine that foundational principle of defending Ambazonia sovereignty. We cannot undermine that foundational principles of allowing French Cameroon to try to change its borders by force. So Ambazonians, we've been left with, with the, or Ambazonians on the ground have been left with no other option but the option of the AK-47 and explosive devices. If the international community wants to do the right thing, it knows what to do, as it tried to do in Ivory Coast, as it did in South Africa, as it went and attempted to do in Libya. But the case of Ambazonia is, international, is, is much clearer than all of these examples. So let's not relent on the fight, and let's use the example of the SDF to underscore the point that we cannot, must not, and shall not resolve this conflict through seeking some accommodation with French Cameroon that undermines the sovereignty of Ambazonia. Thank you very much, Fadi, and thanks again to all our honored lawyers.
thanks to Dr. Tita for the great work that, that he is doing. Much kudos to uh, his department. And Ambazonia shall indeed be free. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ghana Valentine. Um, Ambazonians, until you, you know, there's someone who always says that it's based on love that we're fighting for the people back home. But this is the truth. It's also a challenging thing to live out of home. And the theme this year is quite striking and intriguing. Hope away from home, the plight of our people. Our diasporic community serves as a blessing because the intention of La Republic to Cameroon from the days of Aijo in Tubia was to first of all misinform us, undereducate us, oppress us. That pushed us away and we got emancipated. And that's how you have lawyers like Lefon Goji who study in America and will come to understand the technicalities of our story. Today we have many more. The strategy of Cameroon is to cut the home front with the diaspora. But our people, home and abroad, are suffering. And this is a unique opportunity for us to show some love. Home, hope away from home. Dr. Tita, you are the man at the helm of that department at this very critical time. I know you're faced with some difficulties. What should we be expecting? And how should Amazonians get involved, even though it is just three days away? Please, we use that to round off our discussion for tonight. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you so much again, once more, Director Paddy. Um, uh, thanks to the great uh, team, the great leadership of the members we have in the department, uh, people that are passionate and committed in making sure that our people get the help, our suffering people get the help that they des so desperately need. That's how we are able to do what we do. Sometimes it could be very difficult or very challenging coming up and trying to meet up with all the calls that are coming in. But we are truly grateful to those that are still committed or very committed in the struggle in making sure that our people get some help. You know, please, uh, the World Refugee Day is coming up on Tuesday, the 20th of June. It comes up once every month where the UN Asia highlight the plight of the suffering people that are escaping from debt, from political, so either political situations that are ranging all over the world. But in our case, the people that have loved, uh, finally left their homes or their home down by the wicked regime of La, La Republic of Cameroon into the neighboring countries like Ghana and Nigeria and even the La Republic of Cameroon itself. Our people need help. Our people need our support. Please, you can support HSS through the National Treasury. Send your donations to the National Treasury and just indicate that this is for uh, HSS and the National Treasury will move that money to HSS so we can help support our suffering people. Initially, Barista, Senior Barista Fru had asked the question if we're going to have a HSS fundraiser this, this year. Yes, the, question, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we're working in direct, com uh, uh, direct communication with the Presidency and the National Treasury. Uh, with, uh, we're going to work with resource mobilization as well for us to be able to do a fundraiser for HSS this year. Uh, that should be coming up within the next couple, uh, next couple of months. Uh, also, uh, I had a meeting uh, like a week or so ago uh, with some UN Asia representative on the ground in Nigeria uh, in an effort to look into how the World Food uh, Program can pick up our course. Uh, fortunately, uh, from the feedback I got from them, uh, they just said that before that meeting, the World Food Program just came in a couple of days ago to, to Nigeria to look at it. So, uh, because we have the, the, the World Food Program via the UN organized fundraisers in every social media platform where people are donating and feeding uh, refugees all over the world. Uh, the question I'd ask myself is why is it that they still have not picked up our flight? So I had to have that meeting with them, with the UN Asia representative on the ground, 
uh, in making sure that we see how we can work a way through for their World Food Program to pick up this fight so they can carry out fundraisers, but not only that, mobilize our cause all over social media and the internet everywhere so people can be aware about what is happening. During that meeting, we were informed uh, by some experts on the ground about uh, the Cameroon, uh, one Cameroon embassy that's supposed to be in Calabar that continuously make efforts to uh, sway our people to come over there to try to get food and turn in the, over their, uh, their, their, UNA, their registration cards that they were going to use to send to the regime in an effort to tell the world that our people are returning home. So I really want to strongly uh, talk to our people there in the refugee camp not to go to that supposed uh, colonial consulate in Calabar for anything or for any reasons. Our reports are stating that some people go there and they reported missing in that consulate. So please make no efforts to go there, no matter how much they try to reach out to, to you, to you guys there on the ground. It's very painful watching the video we just watched. We all agree that this pain that Luke has inflicted physical pain and psychological pain that would take a generation to wipe out. The pain cannot go away, no matter what La Republic du Cameroon does in this struggle, unless they withdraw completely out of our territory for our people to live as freely as they can, as a free people. There are no two options. There is no talk of this war has been going on for too long. No, that's La Republic du Cameroon propaganda. No one should tell you that and you believe in them. This war was called, declared by La Republic du Cameroon, the colonial regime. They can call it off in any time. Go and talk to them, to all of those that are out there trying to propagate some false information that these wars have been going on for too long. When is it going to stop? Talk, ask that question to the colonial regime for them to, to stop the war. They declared the war on us. This interim government is standing strong and is standing firm for the freedom of the people of the former British Southern Cameroons and Bazonia. We must win this fight. I also want to say that as this war has been going on for this time, this has cost La Republic du Cameroon tons of money as a country. We are feeling the pain. Yes, it's cost us Southern Cameroonians in the diaspora, our investment money that we could have, we could have saved for retirement and, and or what not that we could use this money it's cost us that but it has cost La Republic of Cameroon trillions I mean trillions are no joke and the regime is about to crash and they come out now and they want to put a false information out there as if they don't they're not the one that declared the war as if they are innocent so I want our people to know this, our people that are sitting down in, in, in the colonial territory or those that might be sitting down, because mostly this might be uh, those in the colonial territory or even some people in the diaspora that have been, say, fallen, up, fallen away from the struggle because of all the La Republic Cameroon infiltration that they brought in in their efforts in claiming that the war has been going on for too long. Uh, what are we going to do? There is no compromise in this fight. But other than La Republic of Cameroon withdrawing from our territory. It, like I said again, La Republic of Cameroon invested every money they had in an effort to cause confusion in the diaspora, in an effort to destroy this interim government, and they failed so desperately. Unfortunately for them, one of their main uh, 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 enabler, I'll call him enabler, that has been enabling their effort in the name of a political opposition party in our territory is gone so everything about them having control of territory is over so we will win this fight well no matter what problem. they want as we will continue okay. in this battle you thank you so much let me not talk too much yes yes thank you, um, uh, thank you thank you very much uh gentlemen for for being a part of this i i just wanted to to enforce based on what dr tita is saying um if you want to make any donations right now, the payment platforms are there. You have the Zelle. I'd advise for now that you use the Zelle and the Cash App so that the, the money can go. If you are in Europe, you can use the PayPal so that it can be transferred like immediately. 
into the accounts that's not what you want to go through the website that might take a few moments to get into the account just use the zell and the cash app and just tap there for world refugee day you've seen uh people actually dying thank you very much all for for coming to this program we 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 had a great time our people are looking into it we've come to the close of this show and i think it's important for me to give a recap you heard from yourself how this whole this man uh rose to power and how he descended as a zero you've also heard how he betrayed a people with his power for with his hunger for fame and power and whatever ideology some would want to say that it was based on to some extent it was based on ignorance you've seen how the lesson we can learn is that solution for a people of Cam the peoples of southern Cameroon who have been annexed can never ever come from yaoundé the era when our leaders would write petition to yaoundé has come to an end in 2016 we had lawyers and teachers writing petitions and we saw what happened it led those were the immediate causes of today there's, there's no more seeking to yaoundé i like the way barista team will put it from time to time cameroon whether they like it or not would have to meet us on the table for a discussion unabated a discussion an inclusive dialogue and a negotiation with a third party and that will not be in their terms we have refugees at least two million globally who have displaced persons it's time for you to think about doing something for them think about the history you're writing should you be registered in the history books as that one who betrayed his own people, despise them at their time of suffering? And it is even scandalous that some of us have traveled all the way from home. We got into the countries abroad and applied for political asylum, for international protection as enshrined in international laws with a claim of the struggle and then we turn around to say that will not struggle that is evil if you find yourself in that place it's high time for you to repent now and start doing the right thing you cannot be so callous every time you are in the diaspora you have you have taken the political asylum and you're holding the opinion of not supporting the movement our movement for total freedom you are literally directly and indirectly endorsing the fact that we are a people within Cameroon if Cameroon was so good to you why did you flee away why did you run away why were you running why would you come and seek for asylum I am thinking that we should figure out a way for those who have categorically denied to participate, to testify against them, if need be. And not, we're not going to do that as snitches. We simply say, no, this person is lying. And just so you know, according to the United States law, I'm sure many countries do have that law. If you're caught for um, asylum fraud, it's a crime in the law. And it's a project I want to engage with. I'm going to consult with lawyers like Barisa team at the back end and maybe even the Indian government I want to I, I want to position myself to identify all those who are in the diaspora seeking for asylum and are not supporting the struggle either morally or financially some of them are the ones mocking the struggle now to give themselves excuses they are claiming Oh, that one, team, you are divided. What have you done to bring it together? You see what we're doing every day. So I really would like to, and I'm not going to do it as though I'm snitching. No, I will tell you that I will write a letter against you to say that you're pretending. 
because you are free with Bia, you are supporting him. Just go back to Cameroon. So we better wake up. It is an apology for us to see our people dying. And we are just gallivanting in the diaspora. It's still working against the, the struggle. That's unfair. It's very unfair. Thank you all for tuning in to this very important program. God bless you. God bless you so very much. I look forward to, to bringing our panelists again sometime next week so that we we can talk on something even more edifying but we promise to give to you reports relating to the the situation at hand we promise to bring to you reports relating to everything that is happening we will we hope that as we provide these reports to you we will be able to explain our stories in a very particular way do not forget to make your donations the payment details of the national treasury is passing under your screen i encourage those in the americas to use zelle and cash app so that the national treasury can receive the money now just indicate there that for hss please please you want to be a part of this and do it and do it right now if you with this beautiful song by Ambazonian born superstars. And until next time, my name is Tap Pariki. Mm -hmm.
professional from the comfort of your home. Dynamic Tech Academy gives you a unique opportunity through our six months program during which you learn skills to transition to being a full-time IT professional. Over 80% of our students have no prior IT background, yet a vast majority of them land jobs a month after they start applying. Our ultimate goal is to reach 100% student placement, so we work with every student until he or she gets a job. Upon successful completion of the course, we will give you a resume, interview preps, one-on-one -on -one coaching from experienced instructors and job placement assistants. Within this course, you get more than 300 hours of theories combined with real-world applications and practical skills you can apply on day one on your job. At the end of the program, our students can be certified as Red Hat Systems Administrator, AWS Cloud Engineer, AWS Security Specialist. Visit our website at www.dynamictechacademy.com to register.